so hopefully you enjoyed listening to chapter one of Kenzuki's Kingdom. Apologies that it came in two parts, the chapter was a little bit long to upload. So chapter two is called Water, Water Everywhere. They say the water covers two thirds of the Earth's surface. It certainly looks like that when you're out there. And it feels like that too. Sea water, rain, water, all of it is wet. I spent most of the time soaked to the skin. I wore all the right gear, the skipper always made sure of that, but somehow the wet still got through. Down below too, everything was damp, even the sleeping bags. Only when the sun shone and the sea had stopped its heaving could we begin to dry out. We would haul everything out on deck and soon the Peggy Sue would be dressed overall. One great washing line from the bow to the stern. To be dry again was a real luxury, but we always knew it wouldn't last for long. You may think there was not a lot for the three people to do on board. Day after day, week after week, you'd be quite wrong. You, In daylight, there was never a dull moment. I was always kept busy, taking in sail, winching in, letting out, taking my turn at the wheel, which I loved, or helping my father with his endless mending and fixing. He often needed another pair of hands to hold it and steady as he drilled or hammered or screwed or sawed. I'd forever be mopping up, brewing up, washing up, drying up. I'd be lying if I said I loved it all. I didn't. But there was never a dull moment. Only one of the crew was allowed to be idle, Stella Artois, and she was always idle. With nothing much to bark at on the open ocean, she spent the rougher day circled up on my bed down in the cabin. When it was fine and calm, though, she'd usually be found on watch up at the bow, alert for something, anything that wasn't just sea. You could be sure that if there was anything out there, she'd spot it soon enough, and a sc score of porpoises, perhaps, diving in and out of the waves, a family of dolphins swimming alongside, so close you could reach out and touch them, whales, sharks, and even turtles, we saw them all. My mother would take photos, videos, and still... Well, my father and I fought over the binoculars, but Stella Artois was in her element, a proper sheepdog game, barking her commands at the creatures of the sea, herding them up from the deep. Annoying though she could be, she would bring her smelly wetness with her everywhere. We never once regretted bringing her along with us. She was our greatest comfort. When the sea tossed and turned us, my mother felt like death from the seasickness. She sit down below the white to the gills, with Stella on her lap, cuddling and being cuddled. And when I was terrified by the mountain and seas and the screaming wind, I would curl up with Stella on the on my bunk, bury my head in her neck and hold her tight. At times like that, I don't suppose they were that frequent. I just remember them so vividly. I always kept Eddie's football close beside me as well. The football had become some sort of talisman for me, a lucky charm, and it really seemed to work too. After all, every storm did blow itself out in the end. Afterwards, we were always still there, still alive and still afloat. I had hoped my mother and father might forget all about the planned schoolwork, and to begin with it seemed as if they had. But once we had weathered a few storms, once we were settled and well in our voyage, they sat me down and told me the unwelcome news. Like it or not, I was going to have to keep up with my schoolwork. My mother was adamant about it. I could see that any appeals to my father would be pointless. He just shrugged and said, Mum's the skipper. And that was the end of the matter. At least at home she had been my mother and I could argue with her. But not on the Peggy Sue, not any more. It was a conspiracy between them. They had devised an entire programme of work. There were maths course books to get through. My father would help me with that if I got stuck, he said. For geography and history, I was to find out and record all I could about every country we visited as we went around the world. For environmental studies and art, I was to note down and draw all the birds we saw, all the creatures and the plants we came across. My mother made a particular point of teaching me navigation too. Barnacle Bill taught me, she said. I'm teaching you. I know it's not on the curriculum, but so what? It could come in handy, you never know. She taught me how to use it the sextant, that take compass bearings, plot a course on the chart. I had to fill in the longitude and the latitude in the ship's log every morning, every evening, without fail. I don't think I ever really noticed stars before. Now, whenever I was on the watch in the cockpit at night, the Peggy Sue on her wind vane, self-steering, the others asleep below, and the stars would be on my, my only company. Gazing up at them, I felt sometimes that 
We were the last people alive on the whole planet. There was just us and the dark sea about us and the millions of stars above. It was on night watch that I would often do my English. This was my own version of the ship's log. I didn't have to have to show it to them, but I was encouraged to write in it every three weeks. It would be, they said, my own personal private record of our voyage. At school, I had never been so much at good at writing. I could never think of what to write or how to begin. But on the Peggy Sue, I found out I could open up my log and just write. There was always so much I wanted to say. And that's the thing I found I didn't really write down at all. Rather, I said it. I spoke it from my head, down my arm, through my fingers and my pencil and onto the page. And that's how it reads to me now. All these years later, like me talking. I'm looking at my log now. The paper is a bit crinkled and the pages are yellowed with age. My scribbly writing is a little faded, but it's mostly quite legible. What follows are just a few chosen extracts from this log. The ent entries are quite short, but they tell a tale. This is how I recorded our great journey. This is how it was for an 11 year old boy as we rode the wide oceans of the world of the Peggy Sue. So there's one of the entries. So it's a log book. And there's a couple more entries there. So your challenge for that chapter is to have a go at writing a diary of just something simple that you've done today. I look forward to hearing from you.